Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our study on investment appraisal by looking at the net present value method of investment appraisal, which is actually the second method of the discounted cash flows that we are looking at, the net present value, which we call MPV. Okay. Now, when we talk about the net present value, it's very simple. I've already introduced you to the concept of discounting. Okay. Now, we know we are dealing with cash flows to evaluate the viability of a project. And then we have already spoken about the other ones like the ARR and then the payback period. Now, with the net present value, what we do is that we look at the project's total cash flows. This time, you are not just interested in the period of time it takes to pay back, no. But we are interested in the total cash flows of the project. And so if I invest, let's say, 10,000 Ghana cities into a project, okay, as an outflow, and I have three years, so year one, two, and three. And if year one, I'm, I'm getting a cash inflow of 4,000. Year two, I'm getting a cash inflow of 5,000. And then year... Three, I'm getting a cash inflow of 5,000. If this is what I'm getting, then it means that I'm getting a total cash inflow of 14,000. Four plus five plus five. That is 14,000. So comparing that to what I invested in year zero, which is the initial investment, I can say that I am getting more than what I invested. I am getting 14,000 Ghana cities as against the 10,000 Ghana cities capital outflow. Meaning that if I have to subtract i'm getting a positive or a, a positive cash flow net a net positive cash flow of four thousand because if you take ten thousand out of fourteen thousand you are getting a positive cash inflow of four thousand that is the basis on which you will take the decision now this is very easy to analyze okay because once i'm getting more than what i invested then i can say that the project is viable and it's ready to be good to be undertaken but we do not just look at the values as they are, okay, in their normal sense. We rather consider what we call the time value of money. And what is the time value of money? The time value of money is what I have explained, that the value of money changes with time. And so 10,000 today will not be the same as 10,000 in two years' time. 4,000 in year one will not be the same as 4,000 in year zero. 5,000 in year two will not be the same as 5,000 in year one or year zero. So as time goes on, the value of money decreases with time. And so what we say is that instead of us adding up this fourth, four, five, four, to see we have a positive cash inflow of 14,000, taking out the 10,000 to give us a net cash inflow of 4,000. Okay, if you take out the 10,000 from the 14,000, you are getting... 4,000 positive, meaning that whatever investment that we put in, we are going to get a net return of 4,000. Instead of us looking at it straightforward and saying that we are going to get a positive cash inflow and so the project should be undertaken, it's a fallacy in a sense that the 5,000 and the 5, 4 that you are seeing here, the value of it relative to the 10,000 you input will not be the same because of the time value of money. So what we do is that we have to discount back these figures into today's terms because year zero is today. So if you want to compare the value of this 14,000, if you want to compare the value of this 14,000 with the 10,000 to see whether you are getting more than the 10,000 or less, then all these figures must be in today's terms. Remember that these are all future values. Okay, so the future values must be discounted using the principle that we have studied from the time value of money. We discount them into today's terms so that we can compare the 10,000 with the discounted value of this 14,000. And if the discounted value of the total 14,000 cash inflows is still more than the 10,000, then we can say that the project has a positive cash inflow. And that positive cash inflow is what we call the net present value. Okay, and so the net present value is about evaluating your total positive cash inflows 
discounted into today's terms, and then looking at your initial investment also in today's terms, and then weighing and then seeing if there is a positive or a negative cash inflow. The decision rule for the net present value is that after doing the discounting and subtracting from the initial capital outflow, we say that if the project has a positive uh, net present value, then the project should be accepted. If the project has a negative NPV or net present value, the project should be rejected. That is it. Now, I have also said that even though we are dealing with this uh, capital budgeting and investment appraisal technique, we are mostly uh, familiar with cash outflow at the beginning of the project's life. That is for the investment appraiser. Now, going forward, I'm going to deal with advanced investment appraiser, and I will show you that there are instances where cash outflow will not only be at the beginning of the project's life. It could be that somewhere you are trade, there could be another cash outflow into the project, which should also be discounted back into today's terms. So all that we are trying to say is that we find the present value. This, we are going to also find the present value, value of this zero, year zero's figure which is the 10,000. However, the present value of today's uh, 10,000 will still be 10,000 because any number raised to the power zero is still one. Remember that the present value uh, formula or the pre discounting factor that is used for present value is one over one plus R raised to the power N. If we are dealing with year zero, N will be zero and any number raised to the zero will be one. So that will be one over one in effect. And if you multiply one by 10,000, you are still getting 10,000. So any figure that you are discounting at year zero is still going to give you the same number. But if there is a cash outflow at year three, for example, then definitely it's going to reduce into the present value. So what we are trying to say is that the general formula for the net present value, the general formula for net present value is this. So your net present value, which is your MPV, equals to the PV, or the present value of cash inflows, minus your present value of cash outflows. This is the general formula for your net present value. So you have to find the present value of all the cash inflows. Then you find the present value of all the cash outflows. And by finding the present value, you are discounting it from the future value into today's terms. So I'm, and I'm going to talk about that. We are going to do the discounting practically. So after doing the discounting of all your future cash inflows, getting it there, then you also take out the present value of all your future cash outflows. And if you compare the two and you are getting a positive figure, then we say that your NPV is positive. And if the NPV is positive, we advise that the project should be undertaking because it's going to give us positive net present value in terms of the cash flows. If the MPV is negative, then we do not embark on the project. We advise that the project should be dropped and not embarked upon. This is the general idea of the net present value. And I'm going to teach you with a tabular approach what we are going to do now. So I'm going to solve a question with you right now, and then we are going to illustrate the idea of the net present value on a tabular presentation. Okay. A company is considering whether to invest in a new item of equipment, costing 53,000 Ghana cities to make a new product. The product would have a four-year life, and the estimated cash profits over the four-year period are as follows. So year one is 17,000 Ghana city cash inflow. Year two is 25,000 Ghana cities cash inflow. Year three is 16,000 Ghana cities cash inflow. And the final year, year four, 12,000 Ghana cities cash inflow. Calculate the NPV of the project using a discount rate of 11%. Calculate the NPV of the project using the discount rate of 11%. Now, so this is the question. So as we can see, there is a cash outflow of 53,000 Ghana cities, and that is at year zero. Year zero means in today's terms. Year one is after one year. That is what it means. And so the 53,000 is a cash outflow for the project. Okay? And then they have given us the cash inflows for year one to four. And so what we are going to do is that we are going to find the PV of the cash outflow, which is the 53,000. And then we find the PVs of the cash inflows. And I have told you that your net present value is the PV of your cash inflow minus the PV of your cash outflows. So I'm going to show you how to present that in a tabular form. And so we are going to say year. 
and then cash flows. And then after the cash flows, I'm going to see your discounting factor. This time, the discounting factor is at 11%, DCF at 11%. And then finally, I'll say present value. So this is how to go about it, okay? You see, year, cash flows, discounting factor, then you put the percentage there, and then the present value. Don't bring the net, just the present value. Your final answer will show whether it is a net. The, the, the final answer is actually going to show the net present value, and you can indicate whether it's a negative or a positive NPV. And so let's begin with year zero, year one, year two, year three, and then year four. Now year zero, the cash outflow for year zero was 53,000. So I'm putting that in brackets. So let us first list our cash flows. After That is why I didn't say cash inflow or cash outflow. I just said cash flow, meaning that whatever cash flow you are listing could be an outflow or an inflow. So the first one, year zero, is a cash outflow. And so year one, the cash flow for year one is 17,000 Ghana cities, as you can see from the question. 17,000. And then for year two, the cash flow is 25,000 Ghana cities. And then for year three, the cash flow is 16,000 Ghana cities. And for the final year, the cash flow is 12,000 Ghana cities. And so this is what you do. You list the years, you list your cash flows, and then you look for your discounting factors. Then you multiply the cash flows by their respective discounting factors. And that is going to give you the present value of each cash flow. And then when you sum up the present value of the cash flows, it's going to give you the net present value. This is a very simple technique of investment appraisal. But I have already taught you how to do the discounting factor. Now, there are present value tables. You can get a present value table where you can trace from your 11% and then pick the discounting factors at 11%. That is when you have the table. But if you don't have the table, you can still go by the approach that I'm teaching you. And the approach will give you the, exactly the answer that the table is presenting. And the formula is 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power N, where R is the discounting factor, the rate, or the cost of capital. And the N is the number of years. And so for year 0, it's going to be 1 over 1 plus. You are using your calculator to punch this. 1 over 1 plus 0 0.11. See, 11% will be 0 0.11 raised to the power 0 because the number of years here is zero. And any number raised to the power zero is one. So that is one over one. That is going to give us a discounting factor of one for year zero. So ladies and gentlemen, you should begin to come to terms that all the time, the discounting factor for year zero, regardless of the percentage, will be one. So year zero's discounting factor is always one because there is no future value there. It is already in present value. Now, year one, there has been one year ahead. So this is, all these figures are future values, and we need to discount them to their present values, okay? And so for the discounting factor for year one, you are just going to change the raised to the power zero to one. So everything will remain the same throughout. So when you change it to one, you put the answer here. When you get to year two, you change it to two. You put the answer here. You get to year three, you change this to three. You put the answer there in that order to get your discounting factors. And so ladies and gentlemen, if you're also reading from the table or you are doing this calculation, the discounting factor for year one will be 0 0.901. I have already advised you that make sure that you maintain your discounting factors to three decimal places so that you can at least get accurate results. So for year two, the discounting factor is going to be 0 0.812. For year three, the discounting factor is going to be 0 0.731. And for the final year, the discounting factor is going to be 0 0.659. Now, you may get different figures depending on the rounding or your approximation, how you went about it. And so there are always margins of errors when it comes to discounting because of differences in approximations. Now, we multiply. Others will also not go by this approach. You can decide to just say, multiply straight away and say that, you know, one over one plus R plus N will be definitely be multiplied by the cash flow, okay? So another way of finding your present value of the figure could be the cash flow over 
1 plus r raised to the power n. They, when you do it this way, you are not finding the discounting factor. You are finding the present value straight away. So meaning that you are going to put this figure up here and divide by the discounting factor. And that is going to give you the present value straight away. And if you do this, you are still going to get the answer. But it may give you differences in your decimals. Okay, so please, let us give room for decimal differences. However, it shouldn't be too wide of a gap. That is why we always advise that you leave your discounting factor to three decimal places. So now the next job to do is that we are going to multiply these cash flows by their discounting factors to get the present values of each of them. And so let us look at it. 53,000 multiplied by one will still give us 53,000 Ghana cities. But remember that it is still a negative figure. So the present value of the cash outflow is still 53,000. Okay, so the next thing to do the next thing to do is to multiply the other 17,000 by 0 0.901. It's going to give us 15,315. So this is the present value of 17,000. And then the present value of 25,000, multiplying the discounting factor, is going to give us 20,291. Okay? And then the present value of the 16,000, that is when you multiply by 0 0.731, it's going to give us 11,000. 699. Okay, let me shift it down a little. 11,699. And then finally, year 4, 12,000 multiplying 0 0.659 is going to give us 7,905. So you see, these are the PVs of the positive cash flows. And this is the PV of the negative cash flows. And I've told you that the difference between them becomes your present value. If your answer remains negative, what it means is that the cash outflow is more than whatever inflows you are getting. Therefore, a negative MPV project should be rejected. However, if you add them up and then you are getting a positive, it means that the net present value is positive. That means you are going to get a positive cash inflow. And therefore, the net, uh, the project should be accepted so let us find the total and so we call the total npv or net present value now what is the meaning of the or the idea of net present value remember that all these figures are present values okay but there is there is a negative and there are positive so we are netting it off to find the final the difference and that is why we, instead of the present value total we say net present value to show that we have taken out the outflow present values from the inflow present values. And so the net present value of this project is 2,210 Ghana cities. And this is a positive NPV. And so ladies and gentlemen, I have told you that the decision rule for NPV is that if the NPV is positive, we accept the project. If the NPV is negative, we reject the project. If the NPV is zero, that is, if there is a break-even, then you cannot say you are outrightly rejecting the project or accepting the project. You have to consider other non-financial factors that are related to the project. It could be that you are not going to get anything in effect. You are going to break even, but it may increase your goodwill by enhancing your brand reputation and other things. So you look at other non-financial factors relating to the project and the benefits, the non-financial benefit is going to give to the organization before you decide on accepting or rejecting the project. But if the MPV is positive, straight away we reject it, we accept the project. If the MPV is negative, we reject the project. Okay. So this will bring us to the end of part five of our video on investment appraisal. We are moving on to the next video where we are going to deal with the internal rate of return. And of course, I also talk about the profitability index. Remember to subscribe to this channel if it is your first time. Share this video and let others also have a benefit. And until we meet again for the next video, it's bye for now. Thank you.